Yo, what's up guys? It's Elmer with EJ Gaming. I'm here joined by my friend Brian Dehesu. Alright, that recently topped the remote YCS. What did you play, Brian? Uh, I played uh, Fire King uh, Asamina. Um, I thought it was just the best deck for the for the event. Uh, I was expecting uh, more so variety. I wasn't really expecting just a straight up Snake Eye. So in those situations, I was just expecting to fire King Ninja to come through. So that's why I thought it was like the best choice for the event. And then uh, uh, before we get to deck profile, I'd like to do some uh, shout outs. So uh, first I'd like to shout out uh, uh, Yui and uh, Chance. Um, and like I'm, th those are my brothers. Like I'm always testing with them. They 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 were for me over there. Like the whole the whole event. They were like always hyping me up and uh, just help me deck uh, test out the deck. And um, we had a lot of like uh, uh, we we're testing and uh, deck building deck for at least like two weeks. PRI is the what were the best choices for the event. Also like to uh, shout out like. Uh, People here in Puerto Rico, uh, everybody just, just show me all, love throughout the event. Uh, I want to shout out specifically Roger, Diego, uh, Roberto. Uh, man, like I, I really appreciate you guys. And same thing with everybody in California. Like uh, man, I appreciate everybody in the uh, the valley that, that hit me up and it was just hyping me up through the whole event. And yeah, want to get into let's get into the profile. All right, let's get into the spice. I hear it's a spicy deck list. Yeah, it's uh, it's something different for sure. Uh, for the most part, it was uh, standard stuff. So I start with the Snake Eye engine. I played uh, one Snake Eye Ash, one Pot, one Oak. That's not too much to explain here. Uh, this cards are mandatory. I know a lot of people go in and out about Oak. Uh, I feel like you need it in the crackback. Like it is extremely important, especially like if you have the follow up with the original and you ran through like uh, these guys and the opponents. So yeah, like I think this card's great. Uh, one Flame Burge. I played uh, I played three Black Witch. Um, I know also a lot of people are going between uh, playing one, two, and three. I personally think that you should play three. Uh, you want to see as much as much consistency as possible, and this obviously enables that. Um, obviously, you want you know you can play three bon uh, Wanted and Deception, but um, I personally think that nothing actually beats having the body. And it also, it helps really, really well into siding patterns because a lot of the times one second, you just need one. So you just side the other two. Um, going for the spells. Uh, three bonfire, uh, nothing too much to say there. Three wanted. Uh, one original. I played uh, the Asamina and then two deception. Uh, same thing with this card, uh, you also want consistency and pushes, but this card, obviously, a lot of times it's just not resolving, and you gotta use a card to just to even resolve it, so um, I think that three is too much, but one is too little. Uh, I think two is the perfect ratio because then post side and you can side one out, but um, yeah, I think like for Fire King specifically, I think you need uh, two is a perfect ratio. Um, then I'll get into uh, my favorite part of the deck, the uh, parking engine. I play two old cannons. Uh, same thing with this card. I see a lot of people going from one to three. I think one is too little, three is too much. Uh, the deck just needs more normal summons. Uh, now that you obviously not opening Snake Ash more consistently, and this at times does more than a Snake Ash, and it just works so well with uh, your other engines uh, part. But I just found that um, as you were comboing, you just needed the extenders and you needed, uh, you, you're you always going to get hand traps. So you always want to like prioritize the body so that you're always ending on something so that maybe if you draw one or two non-engine, then you're able to, you know, get it back to your turn and then you win that way. So, and then the same thing, uh, I just like the rate, the two ratios because uh, it's an easy sideable card. So that's why I play two. Uh, and I'll play, and then now for the uh, uh, one avatar, uh, two Cairns. Uh, same thing with this card, one is too little, three is too much. Um, for the whole format, I wasn't really seeing Infirm and Baylor as much, and the cards that I was just more scared that we're resolving against, which was actually Ash Blossom and Impulse, which this really doesn't stop. So 
but you, you still want it because it's so good into your uh it, it works so well with your engine and when you're recycling it you're just so ahead when they use a hand trap and you you're just able to recycle it or add back one with it and it just makes your inboard significantly better um you specifically in Fire King, you always want to end with this card in their hand if possible so uh uh one garonix one brick uh one Regular Garonix, one Ponix, one Sanctuary, one Island. I think this card is really, really good. Uh, you need it. There's a lot of people that used to cut it. I think now you really cannot cut it because you want to. Uh, this card, this deck is really uh, getting impacted by the motion cards. So you want to be able to um, uh, end on, on stuff that not give to your opponent too many draws. But have uh, interruptions in their in their turn. If you're able to get a like a Karen and then set up the rank eight play with a Karen, then you're able to like have one dark hole pop and then essentially like have another Karen pop. So I think that this two like going forward that they're just gonna have to play them. And then for the non engine, uh, there's some different stuff that I did for this, um, but I'll go for the first the basic ones. Uh, three Ash Blossoms, uh, I think it's one of the best cards uh, in the deck. It's just another fire monster. It works well with the Volcanic Normal Summon. Uh, there was one game in the, um, I think, uh, Top 16 where I uh, I got hand trapped and I needed to uh, extend. So, but without using my normal, the monster that I had in board. So, I had to pop this card and then uh, summon the Kirin and then extend that way. So, I think this card you always going to need it specifically in a uh, Parolia format and uh, Kowalos format, but more so in Fire Game. I played uh, three draw. This card was absolutely insane. Uh, I was expecting a lot of, um, you know, decks that were like, we're going to add a lot for the, for the event. And that's literally what, what happened uh, throughout the whole event. Everybody was just not, uh, almost until I, I entered top card, uh, not a lot of people are just respecting that card. Their first interaction was always the one that lo lost the draw the most. So I just felt like even if I opened this card singularly, depending on how they played, it was just enough to win the game. And uh, most of the times it was. Um, it was really helpful in top 16. Um, having this with a, uh, your inboard, it's almost like having a Nibiru. You're just not going to lose a lot of the times. Specifically, if you use your interruptions correctly, uh, your opponent's not going to have a lot of crackback uh, without, like, with the draw putting pressure. I put, I played uh, three impulse. This card is, I love this card. This card is amazing. Like, this card is just, I got no complaints about it. It's an amazing top deck is an amazing card that you want to open it it conflicts it barely conflicts with your deck i know that you know you play draw but a lot of times you're going to resolve this first and when you resolve this first obviously what usually comes next is like a, a, a intent to push so this really just deals with it so opening this too is like really good and then i did a little something different for the uh for the event um, honestly, I was trying to be uh, I was trying to be player friendly because I didn't have access to Kowalos. So, shout out to Yui for this. Uh, he convinced me last minute to play three Phantasmates. Um, I was gonna play Ogre, I believe, because I'm a fan of just hard opening the card instead of opening a, a, a draw card that obviously can get ass and you might not get some value out of it. And let me say, um, and shout out to you, Yui. Like, this card was absolutely insane. Like, I played against... I know there was a race that were, like, you can play against Centurion. Thankfully, I didn't play against Centurion. I played mostly mirror matches uh, and Ubel matches. So, this was really good. Uh, something that I like about this card is uh, with Fuwalos, when you resolve it, uh, a lot of the times, the opponent doesn't commit into it. So, they... In, in that sense, make a board that actually tries to play around it or get value around that card. Since they don't know this card was coming down, they will go through <laughs> their normal lines. And they say, for example, they will make a sequence. And then I top the uh, impulse. And 
and all the sequence is not doing nothing. And now I have a uh, something that they cannot target on my board. If they do ask well from it, I'm not I'm not cycling the card. Like I keep it in my hand. Uh, it was just amazing. I really have no complaints about it. Like uh, I don't know if I would keep it forward uh, if I get the Fualos, but if the format just pans out being pure and uh, you bell and um, I think this is a good card. I, I can't lie. I think it's a good for Wallace replacement. Uh, because I played this, um, obviously there was a big uh, question about cards that conflict with it. So I played I played just two Imperms. I know this card is amazing, but uh, I didn't want to run the risk of just drawing too many copies of this. Obviously, a lot of the time they're just going to remove this, and then this is just still going to be live. But I... Just ultimately just decided to two and then I replaced the last one uh, for Baylor and it just worked out amazing like I was seeing it a lot of the times another great thing about this card specifically in this deck that a lot of times happened was I was opening key pieces in my parking engine that let me play my opponent's turn so I was seeing a Geronix with like a Kieran and another name it happened like two times, but it, it, that was amazing. Like, and a lot of times I was putting the brick back, so it just synergized insanely well with the deck. And because I wanted more cards uh, to to draw a phantasm that were good, I played one call by. Uh, this deck doesn't generically play uh, cross out, and it most of the time it plays around one hand trap. So this is just really good. Um, I'll get into the extra deck now. It's a forty three card list. Um, for the extra deck, I play, I play one Anima, I think the standard, uh, one Dark, one Hita, one IP, one Nightmare Phoenix. This card, I, before the event, I was considering cutting it because I just didn't think it was going to come up as much and I was right. It honestly, I never used it. it it honestly never came up. Like I realized later that I still had the sale answer so they get aligned with the uh, Rage uh, Solite Wolf. So this honestly could have just been Fucho in the main deck because I sided it. Uh, I put it in my side and um, Fucho could have just been a, an actual like extra side deck card. So moving forward, I don't think this deck needs it. And um, just the XYC does a much better job. And then we have uh, SP Little Knight. So I'm like, well, this card is bonkers. In this deck, you're able to get back Karen, you're able to get a, uh, back Ash Blossom that you mail off a of zombie vampire, or um, that you just used it on a early and then you cycle it back, and you're now you're ending on your board on an Ash Blossom as well. And also, um, I didn't know how prevalent uh, Soul Release was gonna be, so uh, there was times that I was like respecting that card and I was adding back Sacred Gronix, so. Because I, I never used the Karen that I opened, so I, I think I, I was just doing that. So, one Promethean Princess. I'm a fan of two. I'm not going to lie. I don't think you need two in this deck, but it makes it so easy when you go first and your opponent interacts and passes back to you. Making the, the just uh, with an SP and something and making this just uh, facilitates end in the game. But you don't necessarily need it. Now, there's just certain scenarios if you get in it, but... Never wasn't really like in in the format. Like I, I don't think I got Nib just one. So yeah. Uh, the link four is Rain Phoenix. Uh, Will, amazing card. Salantis, really good card. Uh, I play this the Omni Negate. I play Marcialago. This card is really good in this deck. Uh, because a lot of the times you're able to open the Sanctuary next to it, and they interact with this card, and you just pop it, get a piece, and then this card we saw. Uh, Activates to add this uh, another still a simple spoil spell, so it just makes so like the spell that like the imperm or the veiler that you use, then it just really didn't do anything. And then for XYC, I made zombie vampire. I think this card is really good in this deck. Um, I was always making it even if I didn't have to because I always wanted to see what my opponent was playing. Um, my mills was amazing uh, next to my opponents. I was milling. There was one game. I think top 16, uh, game one, where I milled uh, my opponent's uh, Island, Ponix, and uh, Karen, something like that. I think, or Ibotta. It was three engine pieces that honestly mattered in a crackback. And yeah, I 
amazing card. This card, I love it. Uh, it was just anything that he wants. Uh, back to removal, uh, dark hole, like, honestly, I love it. Uh, I think you can cut Nightmare Phoenix and just play this forward and then play something else, like the Fucho. And then now we'll get into the side deck. For the side deck, I played... I played uh, two Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, I wanted to respect back row. I, I didn't know if a lot of people were gonna be in like floodgates. I didn't know if they wanna play uh, deck lockdown, if they were gonna play, um, you know, if a random skill drain or something that was just gonna like not let me play. I never played it. I never sighted it in. I never needed it. Um, I still think you need it uh, in those scenarios, but I just never needed this card. I play uh, Scar Skyward. This card is really good, especially if you get Fuwalos or Tolia. You're able to cycle back this card, and now you have an interruption next to Sanctuary. Uh, uh, really, really good card. I really got no complaints. I think it won me a game uh, where I just set on, uh, a pass on this and uh, Karen, and uh, yeah, not, not that much to say. I play two talents. Uh, with this deck, a lot of the times you have two playable, uh, two playable cards. So you usually leave with the first one that you don't care for it to resolve. Yeah, you when it gets hand trapped, then you resolve talents and then you rip, rip, rip off the next interruption that the opponent may have, or and then you see the hand and then you just make a board. Then and usually, I would say nine percent of the times when you see the opponent's hand and you know what they have and you make a board that beats that you're not gonna lose so really good card um i played uh super Olia. um i think this card is decent uh i don't think it's broken or anything uh i think people over you know people just sometimes don't know how to react to it i think given your opponent one or two draws isn't too much if you know how to play around it so i'm a, again i'm a fan of just opening the hand traps itself so that's why i only really played two um but again really good card and then i played i played one gamma one delta one delta and then one driver uh this pack was, was amazing i've been playing it for a while uh I just feel like it's more copies of Ash Blossom, more copies of Impulse. Uh, same thing, you know, you can say about Impulse that it, it can, carry, um, you know, not really work with work with this. But a lot of the times you're resolving this first, and then the Impulse is gonna come afterwards. Um, uh, Gamma, same thing. Uh, it's a really good card. I was always keeping it sometimes going first because I was scared of Shifter. I don't know if I was gonna get, or if I felt like uh, I was gonna get drawn, then I would go for this. Uh, shout out to Diego. Diego told me to play a common because uh, I was always going to see this card. And I saw it way too many times. I think I saw it like three or four times in my hand. That's so. a curse, bro. Bro, shout out to you, Diego. <laughs> and then um, I play one skill drain. Um, I think this card is mandatory in this deck. It's so good. Uh, whether you and on you make your four board and end on this or just get interrupted and make this and have follow up uh, i think you just need it and following that idea i played uh two power six stone this card was amazing uh this card's just more steel dreams i wish i would have played a third one i honestly f i wish i would have played four cards uh four of these cards in total uh, this card is so good in parking. Uh, you're able to out it. it. You're able to fill up the counter so that your opponent just doesn't get to do anything. And yeah, just having big uh, big sticks with uh, this card is just win a lot of the times. Um, and then last card, I cited the, the Fucho. Uh, again, I, I did this because I thought the Nightmare Fiend was going to come up. It didn't. Uh, I think moving forward, this will come go into the side, and then I might just side the uh, the third copy of this. And yeah, guys, uh, this is the profile. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. All right. Again, Brian, congratulations on making top eight. In appreciate the, that, bro. Thank you. YCS, we're very happy for you. A Puerto Rican hasn't been in top eight in a YCS probably in history, so you're <laughs> the first one, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Profile.